live from Hickory. It's country ish. Alan! Get the country boy. And he's making it good. He was Charles underdog, best in beer overalls, living next to the wood. He liked to eat the sushi, but he don't even fish. Not so much a country boy, it's more like he's country ish. Moved out of his green and headed for Southern Cal. Wound up a TV and film, making popsicle proud. Now this country boy is back with his family. Got himself a podcast, he knows it'll last cause he's in Hickory. That's right, I am from Hickory. I'm happy about it. I hope you're happy. No matter where you are. What up, Bumpkins? You're about to watch and or listen to episode 104 of Country-ish. And we have a frothy, thankful show for you today. And we are live right now. That's right, on Facebook and YouTube. Tell the world, we got a great show. Um, it's Thanksgiving. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, I'm giving money away. Got more residual checks. Uh, we're going to do a muck banging with Reno Collier, so stick around for that. And in small town news, there's a river of beer in Hawaii. That's right. Um, but like I said, we're live on Facebook and YouTube right now. <clears throat> and um, I want you to leave a comment uh, in the comment section. i got two interns over here that are checking the comments, as you can see, sitting right here. You've got, uh, there he is, look at him. Well, you got Elliot the intern and intern Isaiah sitting there. One's doing Facebook, one's doing YouTube. Uh, let me ask you a question. What is your least favorite side dish? I want to know. Leave it in the comment section. Least favorite side dish, okay? And then we'll, if it's interesting or something, we'll give you a shout out. We give shout outs from the um, shows from the last week. And I'm going to do that right now. Uh, I'll read you some comments. Uh, last week, John Glenn. Am I jumping ahead too far there, the Alan Jackson? All good. John Glenn said, you guys are my brew family. Love the cruise. Oh, we love you, John Glenn. Thank you. <laughs> I like that little noise that came with it. It was like, check. Uh, Vicky Withrow said, first time watching, and you guys are great. Thank you, Vicky. We think you're great. Uh, Mason Wallace, I like this one. He said, one time I farted, and there was no smell. I would say that we all thought there would be from the sound, but it was very anticlimactic. I'm sorry about that, Mason. I, I know your pain. I hate that. When you get a good, wet, floppy, sm stinky sounding fart and then nothing comes with it. It's kind of, I don't know, because it, it is anticlimactic. I'm sorry to hear that, Mason. So, um, one last one. Matthew Merritt said, Shout out to me, y'all, y'all are good. Well, thank you, Matthew Merritt. Merritt, there's your shout out out. Uh, okay, now let's move on. Uh, what's your least favorite side dish? I want to know. Um, also, we're a regular old podcast for your ear holes, Apple, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, Podbean, Apple Podcasts. I think I said that one already. You name it, we're on it, Spotify. Um, but I got tour dates coming up. That's right. After Thanksgiving, I'm going to be in Zanies in Nashville, baby. Uh, I'm doing shows Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So uh, come see me in Nashville then. From there, Virginia Beach, Virginia at the Funny Bone the next weekend. And then after that, I'll be in Des Moines, Iowa at the Funny Bone. Then after that, I'll be in Lexington, Kentucky. Your boy is back on the road. Come see me. All righty then. Um, let me get uh, to the man sitting across the table, though. Very handsome fella. And uh, he's kind of famous. Well, I don't know. I don't know. He's not famous, uh, but his brother was famous from Full House. Uh, we got John Stamos's little brother, Marcus Stamos. How you doing, buddy? What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Plenty to be thankful for, huh? Lots to be thankful for. Yeah. Thankful you're. I'm. I'm thankful you're funny. What are you thankful for for me? 
I'm thankful you're handsome. Good enough. <laughs> I'm works. thankful. I'm thankful. Hang on. Oh, it's not your turn. We, we, hold on a minute. No, no, no. It's just my time. Hey, you be quiet now. You just sit there. <laughs> what is this? He just butted in like yeah. he owned the place. Well, go ahead since you already started. Oh, I was going to say, I'm thankful you didn't take us out for sushi this year. <laughs> yeah, last year this time we had sushi. Yeah. Now, didn't you enjoy the sushi? I mean, you, you did spit some in your hat. <laughs> yeah, I did spit yeah. some in my hat. Uh, uh, have you been back to sushi since then? No, I've never, mm. never been back to. But you can now sushi. tell people you've had sushi, isn't that? And great? it was terrible. Yeah, there you go. You have an opinion about it. That's awesome. Yeah, um, I'm thankful for all of you guys for coming here and being part of the show. I'm thankful for you guys at home for watching, for hitting that share button. That's what I'm thankful for. See, we grow a little bit. And I think it's because you guys are hitting the share button and you're leaving comments. And I love all that, but sharing is the most important. In fact, I'm going to do a thing because I know sometimes you're thinking, well, John, if I hit the share button right now, I'm going to miss a funny thing that that you do with your face. And I don't want to miss that. So don't worry. I got your back. I come up with something that I I call this the share stare. I'm going to put the share wig on. And I'm going to look right down the barrel of the camera. I'm going to beg you to share. That's what I like to call the share do you believe in sharing this pod? Huh? <laughs> I believe there's something on my head. It's a dumb wig. Please hit the share button. Hit the share button, man. Look how hard I'm working for you. All right. That's the least they can do. Right. I mean, you put on a silly looking wig and you sing and... Yeah. They say do hit the share button. Thank it's very you humbling. So thank button. you. Yeah. Thankful, thankful for that, yeah, that you hit the share button. That you hit the share button. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, yes, yes. Thanksgiving uh, is coming up. What is your least favorite side dish there, Stamos? Now that I got you, don't say anything sweet. Name one thing that you hate the most. Uh, cranberry sauce. Oh, yeah. so it comes in a can, yeah. right? And you, when you, it looks like uh, a big hunk of Jello when it yeah, comes out of the can. The mold of the can and inside of the can. Some people yeah. prefer that kind. I, you know what, growing up, I love my mom dearly, but she's not a turkey fan. So we didn't really get a whole lot of turkey. She always does a baked ham, and I love it. But that being said, not that much turkey, not that much cranberry sauce. Yeah. Didn't really get it a lot. It's just like jelly, right? Isn't it basically just cranberry, just jelly? What's the difference between grape jelly and cranberry sauce? I mean, besides the grape and the cranberry, they're both fruits, and they're both like, a jello type deal. Is there anything different? Something I'm missing? Anybody know? The consistency is a little bit different of the cranberry sauce. Like if you were to say try to spread it on bread, yeah. I think it wouldn't. So is it more like a jam than a jelly? Or is it a sauce? I'm confused. Either way, um, that, that's not his thing. He doesn't do sweets. What does a cranberry? So cranberries are little small berries, right? Yeah. <laughs> so why not just get a handful of those and eat them instead of turning into a gel like substance? <laughs> What is your least favorite, guys, over here? Least favorite side dish. Go. I don't Anything with mayonnaise. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm on the same track. I don't so like maybe, mayonnaise. Maybe, what about coleslaw? Ooh, yeah. Oh, okay. no, sir. I hate coleslaw. There we go. Well, or, I'm and ham there. salad. <laughs> hey, what? They make that at, th- my mom makes that at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Ham salad. Isn't that And weird? I can't stand it. Yeah, I don't. Uh, That's what the you word do with ham leftover. and salad should not. I mean, you should have a salad with maybe little bits of ham in it, but you shouldn't make an entire salad out of ham. Oh, you got to get creative when Thanksgiving's well, over. You're going to have ham left over. So you yeah, make yeah, ham yeah. salad, turkey salad. Yeah. So uh, she makes it with canned ham, mayonnaise, and relish, and it tastes like crap. I love me. you, Mom, but it tastes <laughs> awful. Canned ham. What else? Relish. Uh, relish. Yeah. And mayonnaise. Oh, uh, that doesn't sound bad to me. Now, what I would do is spread that on a... You know, like a piece of bread. That'd be pretty good. Or a yeah. saltine. Well, that's how you eat it. You saltine. It that you can't find. You can't find saltines <clears throat> anymore, right? Yeah, yeah they're gone. Isn't that what Somebody. you told me? So there's a saltine shortage uh, going on in the country right now. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a bad time. A bad time. Right uh, thoughts and prayers to all the people who are trying to get their saltines right now. Hope you can make it through this difficult time. Yep. Um, also, I want to talk about my weekend with Reno Collier. Had a good time. Did shows in uh, Evansville, Indiana at a Civic Center. 
which is kind of weird. The shows were great, but the venues were kind of weird. It was kind of like an optimist, like a um, community center. You yeah, said it's a community center, kind of like a rec- recreation yeah. center. Where there's, was there a ball court there, like a basketball court yes, there? Yes, there was. Okay. Yeah, it's like a, doing a show to YMCA like after dark. Bingo. There'll be some bingo going on there. Look like some, an AA um, meeting could break out any time. Some yard selling going on there. Yeah. Yeah. So that was weird. And then we did a show after that at the National Corvette Museum. Hmm. And that was pretty cool. I got some pictures of that. Would you like to see them? Yep. Okay. So here's something you might not know. Uh, the National Corvette Museum, there was a, a major sinkhole that happened there maybe, maybe 10 years ago, something like that. And it like eight, like eight or 10 cars. And so they tried to dig some of them out and some they left in there and they made it part of the museum. So what you're looking at right here in this picture, can you see that Stamos? Yeah, it looks like a uh, door. Yeah, it's a manhole cover. That's a door to it, and then go to the next one, the air engine, and you look down it, all the way down there, and you can't really tell in this picture. That's probably about 40, 50 feet down. It's basically a cave. They built this stuff on top of a cave, oh, wow. and it caved in, and there's Corvettes down there. Oh, so that's... They couldn't even get to them. Hickory had a Corvette get swallowed up by a sinkhole. Remember that? That's, that's crazy. That's what I was crazy. Uh, sinkholes love cars. And they Corvettes. Love Corvettes. Apparently, because yeah. that was what happened here. What's the next one, the Alan Jackson? Oh, yeah. So those are the cars that they pulled out. Look at that. Mangled Corvettes. Um, so we did a show there. You can keep going, the Alan Jackson. That is, um, oh, gosh, number three, Earnhardt's car right there. That's mm-hmm. an Earnhardt Corvette, I guess. And I forgot who that one was. Oh, that's Earnhardt again. Yeah, keep going. Let's scroll through these real quick, and I'll show you. All right, yeah, Corvette C, C5R. Do you like how I read this like I know what I'm talking about? I don't know anything about cars that much, but I thought that would be interesting to show uh, 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 Earnhardt's. Now, here's the sinkhole under the Sky Dome. You are there. Um, it shows you how big it was, and it ate a bunch of them. Yeah, you can keep going. Now, look at this one. George Jones had a Corvette that he donated to this museum, and that is George Jones Corvette. Look at that thing. It's two-toned, tan and taupe. (laughs) Who chooses those colors? Nobody but George Jones, and I love it. It Would you paint a car that color? Well, you had a color. You had a Camaro that color, the the brown (laughs) color on the bottom, the dookie brown. It was maroon. You call it doo-doo brown. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It was maroon or burgundy. I think this is straight up tan and brown. Yeah, so uh, he, I guess he donated it in 1994. This is 1978 Corvette. Pretty neat. So we did shows there. I had a good time. I stayed at his place. Um, and it was all around a great time. Also, let me bring this up. Um, I like to talk about the Panthers from time to time. And, you know, last week we talked about how Cam Newton is back. And I predicted uh, everyone's getting excited too quick, because uh, I have a feeling it's going to go downhill like it did last time. And I predicted that he would throw two interceptions this game, and I couldn't be more wrong. I was wrong, and I'm happy about it, because I want the Panthers to win. Yeah, you've been a big critic of his. I have. You've, uh... Still not a fan, but I like it when he does well, obviously, because he's a Panthers uh, quarterback. But he did great. He – he scored many touchdowns. He threw well. He ran well. Um, all around great performance, even though we lost because our defense is horrible that game. I don't know what happened. They ran the ball all over us. Almost 200 yards of rushing. It, yeah. was, it was sad. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad he's back. This, um, our other alternative is not a good one. Yeah, this was the perfect time so, to bring, bring him back. Why not? Exactly. We couldn't have, do, couldn't have done any worse. All right. Uh, interns, any interesting comments uh, uh, as of yet? People commenting about their least favorite side dishes, but we can wait if you want to. Oh, sure. Well, it's good. I'm just making sure people are paying attention. <laughs> very closely. And you are. Okay, very good. All right, let's, get on, let's move forward to our first segment. Um, what I do here, you see, is I go to Twitter, click on your hashtag, and I find what it is people are talking about, and I weigh in. Uh, it's how you know that we are current, that we are live, that we are in the moment, we're in the know, and we weigh in. It's a segment called, Who is the best trend? Here's what you're talking about. All right. 
This is brought to you by Hendrick Honda of Hickory. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? Go to Hendrick Honda Hickory. Get yourself a Honda. You will thank me later. Even get a hot dog or a hamburger. They grill out a lot down there. All right. Well, this is what was trending. Hashtag Dollar Tree uh, will soon be known as the Dollar Twenty Five Tree. They're raising their prices to a dollar twenty five, and people are going nuts. Um, what are your thoughts, uh, Stamos? I know that you like to go to dollar stores we go to uh well let's think how many do we got here we got dollar general we got uh family dollar family dollar and the dollar store dollar tree so it looks like the dollar tree is the first one to strike blood on the we're raising our prices with the inflation and everything yeah is this going to affect your life uh no but i do like to go to dollar tree i was in one a couple weeks ago and i even thought about this it was like with everything going up, are they going to raise their prices? And it's funny that this just happened. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, you go into Dollar Tree, everything's $1. Um, but no longer. You're looking at a dollar twenty-five per item now. now a lot uh, of that stuff isn't even worth a dollar. It's what's funny. It's all junk Because it's smaller, smaller quantities of your stuff that you're getting. Right. Um, did you, uh, on the cruise, the first cruise we went on, uh, did you buy soap from a Dollar Tree? Yeah, I bought a family pack of soap. <laughs> yeah. And you don't want to take that on a. I, I thought that was funny because uh, Mark bought soap for the trip, and it comes in a family pack. And you didn't take one bar of soap out for the trip; you just put the whole dang thing in there, right. like eight bars of soap. Yeah, probably got it for dollar twenty-five. Yes. Yeah, life boy. Yeah. Or maybe it was you never dial. know how dirty you're going to get on maybe a cruise. Maybe dial or uh, Irish Spring, but anyway. They I, they they pulled you aside. They thought it was like explosives or something. Yeah, but apparently they here we don't go. Like that. I, I think it's going to cost more money to change the dang sign. I think they're going to already. Leave it. You got Dollar Tree. I think they'll leave it Dollar Tree. I don't think they're going to change that. I don't. I hadn't read the article yet, but I think it'll stay Dollar Tree. Um, but everything will be. A I don't know. I, if I were a marketing <laughs> guy, right, I would say, look, guys. Right now we're called Dollar Tree. We need to raise the prices. Why don't we use the number three? We've already got the word three up, a tree up there, but we could throw an H up here, make it dollar three. Okay. Dollar three, dollar thirty. You know what I mean? Plus tax. You're putting tax in there. I know. I'm just trying to make it work. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to crowbar it in there. But yeah, dollar tree, dollar twenty five tree. It doesn't roll off the tongue. I'm not happy about it. The dollar one point two five tree. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Are they going to start selling rolling papers? There's a rolling paper one point two five. That's what I was thinking. They can't take that one. Yeah. Uh, Elliot, you go to Dollar Tree? Occasionally. Yeah. Is this going to affect you? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Well, uh, hang in there. Saltines, now Dollar Trees. What's next? Um, I don't it's a know. sad, sad world we're living in. Uh, but let's move on to something more pleasant also that was trending. Uh, as I speak to you right now, t- today it's 8, 19 p.m., Tuesday, November 23rd, and it is National Cashew Day. All right. A favorite snacking and party nut is recognized each year on November 23rd. The cashew nut is a seed harvested from the cashew tree. The tree originated in northeastern Brazil. However, it is now widely grown in tropical climates for its cashew apples and nuts. Did you know there was a cashew apple? I did not. Have you ever saw a cashew in the shell? Or uh, the shell. I don't I, think so. I don't have think I have either. Well, I brought some cashews. Do you guys like cashews? Yeah, they're good. I hate them. It is my least favorite nut. And I know I'm weird on this because everyone loves cashews but me. In fact, I, I'm, I'm so adamant about disliking cashews that when I buy a nut mix, I will pick them out and put them in a separate container and let my mom eat them. Hmm. Yeah. So, so what did you do? Did you, this is how you got these? Yeah, I pulled the best ones in this bag because I pulled them out of the. Uh, we already have a party mix, and I pulled the cashews out and brought them for the show because I know it was cashew day here. See if uh, Isaiah wants some. You want some cashews, Isaiah? Yeah, yeah I like cashews. <laughs> catch. There you go. Good catch. <clears throat> Good cashew catch. Uh, cashew outside. How about that? <laughs> no, I don't like cashews because they're too soft. See, I, when I when I bite into a nut, I want to crunch. They're just kind of soft. Um, hmm. So not my not my favorite nut. My favorite nut, if you're asking, and it switches. You know, right now it's pecans because we're in you know Thanksgiving that season. Time. I like Brazilian nuts. I like hazelnuts. 
And I like almonds in those order. Can I ask you something? Yes. Do you like D's nuts? <laughs> <laughs> Had where's to do the it. laugh button? Had to do it. Yeah, where's the machine? Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. I mean, time. he set that up for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, <laughs> Stainless. <laughs> All right. Look, let's move forward. Happy National Cashew Day. Uh, my apologies to Dollar 25. How are you going to say that? Dollar Tree rolls off the tongue. Dollar, are they going to call it Dollar 25? Tree? Dollar and a quarter. Is tree. it just going to get rid of the tree or just call it Dollar, dollar and a quarter? Dollar and a quarter. Oh, tree. I like that. Dollar and a No, and buck a. and a quarter. Buck and a quarter tree. I like that. That's what Lee Hodge just said. The gentleman we were discussing from Doesn't Matter, he suggested that a few minutes ago. He said, call it buck and a quarter buck and a tree. Quarter. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, I like that. Hey, it reminds Lee. me of an old Andrew Dice Clay nursery rhyme. Hmm. You, know, you know how he used to do nursery rhymes? Yeah, the dirty nursery. Dirty nursery rhymes. Mm -hmm. He says, Jack and Jill went up the hill, both with a buck and a quarter. Jill came down with 250. <laughs> that... <laughs> Sorry, Mom. That's an uh, Andrew Dice Clay joke. Have you seen him lately? No, I haven't I, been out to LA right now. Well, lately. I mean, like, not in person, but Facebook. Oh. He's got, I'm, I joined his page. And, uh, what, what's, what's going on? He, 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 he looks pretty rough nowadays. Did looks he? like he's seen his better days. He's yeah. turning into an old Jewish woman. Yeah, that's what I got <laughs> out of. Because yeah. his glasses are getting yeah. bigger, yeah. right? He's pretty slow. He's lost a little he's weight. He's slowing weight. down. He's a little he's feeble. Hunch over a little bit. I figure he had some rough times, some some party days. <laughs> oh, I'm and sure. And a he lot did. of dope. Um, but he's pretty funny. I used to love Enterdice Clay. Oh yeah. All right, let's move on to our next segment. Uh, when I was in um, Nashville, not, not not just Nashville, I was in. Uh, I stayed with uh, Reno Collier. And uh, we went out to eat, and we did a mukbang. Would you like to see this mukbang with Reno Collier? Mama, so don't worry. It was just temporary. We had to eat at some point. I thought, well, let's record it. And, uh, well, here, check out this mukbang with uh, Reno Collier. You got it, buddy. Thank you very much. drive through Oscars. Delicious. Mexican. We're getting uh, carne asada. Carne asada. Carne asada, burritos, and... Cheap. Are we allowed to talk like that anymore? No. I was doing, uh, just for the record, I was doing uh, uh, um, Andy Kaufman's character from Taxi just then. He's from Latvia, which is a made-up island. Yeah, and I'm too from Latvia. So that was not a racist thing at all no. that we did. It was homage to a character. You can't do stuff like that. Like, if you, if I was to look in there and be like, bing chong, ching chong, like, you're yeah. not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to, hey, hola, how you doing? You can't, can't do, do that. <laughs> no. So in case you didn't know, this is not a drive through it's a pickup window. This is not a drive through it's a pickup window. This is not a drive through it's a... So it, are they saying that this is a drive through <laughs> pickup window it's only? It's a pickup window only. But is it a drive through now we don't know. <laughs> you know who should be mad is Southerners. Every time there's a movie, it can be in Chicago, mm -hmm. it can be in New York. Whenever a cop pulls someone over, the cop always goes, "Hey, boy, <laughs> yeah. get out of the car. You, you know why I pulled you?" And it's like, there's no way some guy from the South just moved to New York just to become a cop. <laughs> get out of the car. Right. Yeah, you know like, what I mean? Yeah. Like it's How like Southern. Get up there? Yeah. Every, you know, Southerner's like, you know what? I'm going to get law enforcement, but I ain't doing it here. I'm going somewhere I know nobody, yeah. no thing. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, boy. I've noticed that, and I've also noticed that in the future, whatever science fiction movie you want to, there's not many Southerners left in the no. future. They're done with us. They're done. So whoever's writing science fiction movies hates the South. Well, I mean, but it's been going on. The Jetsons. Mm -hmm. The future, yeah, no southerners. <laughs> right. Normally, what I do when I get Mexican food, like if it's like this, I cut it this way so I can stick it in my mouth. I got a tiny mouth; it's hard for me to get, so I'm gonna have to go on the edge on this, which means the first couple of bites, no sauce. Can I tell you what I do? Yes. The same thing, but I take a small bite off the end, and mm -hmm. I have a hole that I can pour the sauce down into. Nice. So first bite is without sauce. It's yeah. your raw dog. You're just gonna you're, you're raw dog in it. <laughs> okay, carne asada, Oscars. That's what it looks like. Delicious. Here we go. All right. It's so freaking good. What was in here? Is there cheese in there? Uh, there might be. There's onions, peppers, tomatoes. You know, I like love a, that they don't put lettuce on here. Uh uh. It's, it's just a waste straight. of time. Lettuce on any kind of like so stupid. warm warm taco or burrito. Lettuce. So the green is less hot. You want to do a shot of it? They're in little cups. 
We should. Hang right. on. I can't. Why? I mean, I will for this. <clears throat> Actually, I can't. Now that I'm getting a taste of it. Too hot? I don't do hot at all. But there's no way I can do shot. The red's hotter. You should do a shot. The red's, it's, the red's really, like my tongue is on fire right now. I mean, you do hot stuff though, normally. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm, I'm not trying to be a tough guy. Like, <laughs> Do you do, do you have acid reflux? Yeah. And this one. And the pot of coffee, we oh my drank God. two pots of coffee this yeah. morning. Yes, we did. And during that show tonight, it'll be. You gonna do it? Okay, don't do it. Okay. I, I mean, if I was 30, I'd do it just to be a jackass. Mm -hmm. But now, oh. it's like, it stings. <laughs> it hurts. Like, a few times. Yeah. What's the history of Austin, you know? So, in 1968, there's a family that moved here from Cozumel. The grandfather's name, I don't know what name it is. <laughs> In the beginning when you said, okay, it was a family from Cozumel. Which was weak. My brain, the only thing I could think of in Mexico was Cozumel. I was just in Cozumel. They came from a carnival cruise ship. <laughs> I'm trying not to sneeze. If you do, cheese is going to come out. I fought it off. Do you see it? Dude, if you fire a piece of steak out of your nose, it will be the greatest <laughs> thing to happen all morning. <laughs> and it just goes like it this. It would hurt like, like hell. Yeah! <laughs> it would hurt. It would hurt so You'd bad. have to pass it almost. But did you not, are you not proud of how I fought that off? It was pretty badass, really. Have you ever done that where you just like, you know what to do? You're like, mm, yeah. Stand it out. But we have all these tiny little containers. They look like little shot glasses yeah. of red and green sauce. And what you do is you literally take whichever one you want and you just pour a little bit in each yeah. bite. And it goes, so by the time you get to the bottom of this. The bottom bite's the best, right? Because it it's got everything that trickled down. Right, so. it's all down here in the bottom one. didn't get eaten in the top. So far, so good. Muy bueno. Mi amor Oscars. Is that Italian? <laughs> Mia Moore? <laughs> Isn't that the Dean Martin sing? Yeah, that's a more. Oh. <laughs> when the burrito hits your eye like a big uh, Mexican guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a man well. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna try a little bit of the red. It's spicier, just so you know. Because got. I've always told my mom when we do these together. That I'm going to try everything. Like even if it's something I normally don't like, yeah, I'm at least gonna try it. I'm just gonna pour a little bit in here. It is hot, buddy. Okay, just a tinge. I just don't want you to have heartburn tonight. Push it down, dude. I'm already done. Like I finished mine. You're hungry. I'm starving. Here we go. All right, it's gonna take a second, and then you'll. Pretty good, huh? Mm hmm It's really good. Yeah. It's tasty. I mean, that's not too hot for me. No. The tomatillo, the green one. Yeah. Have you ever seen them make that? Sometime during the Mexican, during the war, mm -hmm. maybe of 18, whatever it was. Spanish-American War? No, that was in Spain. Right? Yeah, it was, no, the Spanish Alamo. It, it was oh. um, during the Alamo, but that was an import thing that they were fighting over. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, who's the guy? Well, it, it, there's a bunch of them. Buck, Davy Crockett was Davy Crockett. Alamo. Have you ever been to the Alamo? Uh huh. I've never been. That's how I learned about them. <laughs> the Thomas Leo thing. Because of the tour? Yeah. She told us about like what the war was about, and a lot of it was importing kind of things like now. Oh, okay. Kind of trying to, but the tomatillos, and that was a big part of it. Oh, yeah. It's worth it, man. You know I just made all that up. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I totally <laughs> believe you. I know. Now what is a tomatillo then? I don't know. It's a green. <laughs> I think it is like a tomato. But I don't think the Alamo had anything to do with it. That would have been cool. Tomatillo is also my porn name. <laughs> <laughs> tomatillo? Uh-huh. <laughs> Mine's cheese dip. <laughs> <laughs> this experience, that burrito, one out of five. 
five being the best. Dude, I give it a five. I give it a five as well. Yeah? Yeah. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. You full? I'm full. Hey, I cannot take the place of his mom. His mom is a beautiful, wonderful person. But Mamosa, thank you for letting me sit in with your boy today. <laughs>
Well, I, I like it. You know, I also do another podcast, um, and that host won't be able to use this desk because he's in another place. You do another <coughs> podcast with a Jonathan Hefferon. <laughs> That's right. Jonathan Hefferon. Uh, and I do a podcast called Hefferon and Reap. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we got together. Uh, we go live every Monday nights at 730. So check that out. Here's a clip of what we did uh, last night. Check this out. So, John, before the show, I, I'm, I'm kind of liking doing videos, watching videos with you, because it apparently reaction videos are, are a hit. You know, they're on TikTok as well, people reacting to their videos. Mm -hmm. So before we went live on my personal Facebook page, I just said, hey, send me a link to a video that I think John Hefford would have a weird reaction to. And oh. Rick Sanford the third sent some maybe shane flynn i don't know um but you know we're, we've been talking here without comments for 42 minutes okay you Let's want go. me to open it up to comments and then also we watch these videos sure. with people okay yeah. let's do it oh here we go. <laughs> what is oh right. boy i'm gonna like this one probably this is... wait wait i'm gonna call it that horse is gonna sidekick that dude in the chest okay i've not seen this i think that guy's gonna get crapped on <laughs> okay. Oh. 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 That hurts. Get off me. Dang, the horse oh, has to step over the that's a big step to step over. <laughs> yeah. That horse is flexible, man. <laughs> I, I would do the same thing if some jackass was putting the brand on my ass. You idiot. Oh, let's see it again. It makes me happy. Because I feel bad for the horse. <laughs> oh, my God. You know how close to his face that was? I mean, I got <laughs> oh, my God. Woo! <laughs> oh, That's dang. Cool. Everybody start laughing, everybody. <laughs> Good God, man! That, that, would you like to be kicked that hard by by a mule? No, that would hurt. Not enough. Not in the head. No, that or not anywhere actually. All right. Well, uh, we got uh, residual checks to give away in a great small town news coming up. Uh, but yeah, so let's move on. All right. So look, there should be a phone number at the bottom of the screen. If not, there'll be a, there one shortly. Okay, start calling that number because in a minute I'm going to pick three people at random. Well, Alan will pick them at random. We'll let you into the room, and then we're going to make you guess. We'll, we'll let you guess how much. So here's here's the deal. I get these. I got one, two, three, four checks sitting on this table. So your boy's done some acting back in the day. Been in some movies, some sitcoms, some commercials, and what else? Uh, movies, sitcoms, adult films, commercials, I'm not and proud of. Films, not proud of. <laughs> I always say that. See, see you if you really pick up on it. No, I just say it to see. It's, it's like a throwaway, yeah. and I want to see if anybody ever picks up on it. My mom does. She's like, been you better not. Have you ever been My offered? Mom always falls for it. Like Elliot mom, said, not. he watched some of them. Oh yeah, which one? What was your favorite? Uh, the ones I didn't have to pay for. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's either Hemi powered penis or Hickory stick. <laughs> It was a double feature. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a joke, Mom. I haven't done any adult films. But uh, they have to pay you residual checks when they air things. I get them in the mail all the time. And uh, I thought I'd make a game out of it. I'm going to open up. I'm going to let Stamos choose one of the checks. He will present it to me. I will open it. I will tell you what it's for and how it's airing. And then you guess at home. You call in. Closest person to the amount. I will mail you the check. Or Elliot will mail you the check. It's a game <clears throat> that we <clears throat> like to call How Much Is That Screen Actors Guild Residual <laughs> oh, oh, we go, oh, oh, check. Check. <laughs> All right. Well, hand me one, buddy. All right. I ain't looking at nothing. We're going to go with this. All right, just slide it over. I'll take care of the rest. Bing, bang, boom. Boom, bam, boom. Okay, I'm going to open it where you can't see it. 
Okay. And uh, see what this is here. Start calling in. What I'm going to do is do some in-house guesses. Uh, don't look over here. In-house guesses. And then uh, these guys will guess. And then it'll, it'll, it'll uh, help you come up with how you should guess. So you read my poker face, my bad poker face. All right, here we go. Okay. Okay. This is for Sebastian's favorite show that I've done. Blackish. Jane the Virgin. Oh. <laughs> I can tell he doesn't watch unless he's on it. <laughs> I can quiz you about anything I Sebastian's ever done and you would fail. Never. I no idea. Yeah. So I did an episode of Jane the Virgin. I played an exterminator. And this is for uh, Chapter 68. It's for Internet Rental. An electronic sell-through. Um, it's one check. Oh, do we want before taxes or after taxes? I'm going to do after taxes because that will be the actual amount that you're going to get, that you're going to win. So we're going to guess on after taxes. Stamos, how much is the Screen Actors Guild residual check? I'm going to go with $3.33. $3.33. Mm, a little... Pessimistic, but I expect that. Pessimistic. You. Yeah. Definition, please. Stick in the mud, stay most. <laughs> oh, Debbie Downer. Not so. Not going to work out, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that. It's a waste of time. Well, I got to start low and then yeah. let these guys so work his, away. So his guess is way low. Well, it's not way low, but it's low. All right. So let's move over to, uh, I'm going to let Isaiah go. I haven't seen him guess on this game in a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, how much is this screen out of game? Uh, I'm going to go $6.25. $6.25. Way too low, Elliot. $16.11. We're getting closer. Wow. Mark, have a ball. Go more. I will go $18.25. $18.25 is Mark, have a ball's guess, and he is the closest one. But he's not exactly right. That's where you come in, all right? So let me ask Mr. The Allen Jackson, do we have people in the bullpen? Okay. You pick one at random. We'll get them in here. We'll talk to them. We'll see if they can get uh, have a better guess on how much this screen actor skill job. Who we got? Let's do this. All right. Should be in there. All righty. John Reap here. Who am I talking to? Hey, how are you doing? That's Samantha Dawn Kingston, I do believe. Yes, sir. How you doing, boo-boo? Doing good. I hope you're feeling better. Much better. Yeah. How long did it take you to get used to being on the dry land? Um, good 24 hours. We yeah. were still rocking coming up the road. Well, I hope you had a good time. Did you have a good time on the cruise? Had a wonderful time. Awesome. What was your favorite part? Cozumel. Which one? Oh, Cozumel. Yeah. Cozumel, what did you do in Cozumel? Mexico. I thought she said Cottonmouth. <laughs> what'd you do in Cozumel we, we did the we did the tequila mixer um and we got to see the dolphins and we had a really good time well good all right well you have been watching the show for those of you who don't know who I'm talking to this is super fan Samantha Don Kingston uh what do you think of the new desk love it it is gorgeous yeah it really is all right Samantha you heard the in-house guesses I think yes Yes. All right. How much is this Screen Actors Guild residual check? Twenty-one fifty. Ooh. I guess you can look at it now. So I can look. Yeah, I've already yeah. guessed. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> Hi, Mark. Hey, Samantha. Sorry I missed you on the cruise. I know that was your worst part is me not being there. <laughs> heartbroken. I know. Simply yeah, heartbroken. There were a lot of people asking about you. I did get to see her before the cruise. She came yeah. by and visited us here, so... Well, that was a great guess, but it's not exactly right. Put her on hold, the Allen Jackson. Let's go to the next caller and see if they can get it right. She said twenty-one fifty, and that is a great guess. All right, who am I talking to? John Reap here. Who's this? This is Taylor from Idaho. Taylor from Idaho. Thank you, Taylor from Idaho. All right, now Tyler. I'm sorry, Tyler. 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 Yes. <laughs> T Y L E R, yes? Yes. What part of Idaho are you from? Boise? I grew up in Boise. I was born there, but I am currently residing in Middleton, Idaho. 
Middleton, Idaho. I bet it's beautiful up there. Is it really cold right now? It's kind of cold. It's it's mostly farm area. It's probably about 30 minutes outside of Boise, but not too bad. I bet you got good taters up there. <laughs> certainly do, my man. What did he say? Certainly do, my man. Yeah, certainly do. Heck yeah. Uh, well, I love Idaho. It's been a minute since I've been up there. I used to go to Boise quite a bit. What do you do, Tyler? I actually work in a retirement home with people who have different stages of Alzheimer's. Oh, my goodness. Well, bless your heart. That's the Lord's work. Thank you for your service. That must be, oh, that's going to be tough. I got, I got My dad's in a skilled nursing facility, and it's, uh, it's not an easy profession what you do. So thank you for that. No problem. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. You got big plans? Uh, my wife and I are kind of just hanging out by ourselves. Uh, everyone else is going off to their respective in-laws, so we just thought, the heck with it. We're just going to order takeout and have fun. <laughs> there you go. Have a, uh, you know, dine-ins giving or something, a takeouts giving, whatever. Exactly. Well, enjoy it, my friend. Exactly. I'm rooting for you um, uh, on account of your profession. You heard the last guess. What is your guess, Tyler? How much mm -hmm. is the Screen Actors Guild residual, Chad? See, last cast was twenty one something. I'm gonna hit twenty three twenty seven. We're getting there. Dang. All right, put him on hold, the Alan Jackson. Samantha, I am so sorry. Uh, Tyler is in the lead. Let's go to the next call real quick before they get that hint. All right, John Reap here. Who am I talking to? This is Dale from Georgia. Dale from Georgia. What part, buddy? Uh, I, uh, I'm from Jackson, Georgia. It's good to be talking to you. <laughs> what do you say? I don't know. I meant like what part I said of... it's good to be talking to you. Yes, sir. Good to talk to you as well, Dale. What part of Georgia do you reside? Jackson, Georgia. Jackson, Georgia. All right. And what do you do for a living, buddy? I'm a custodian at uh, Henry County Schools. Okay. Well, good for you, man. Uh, you got some good Thanksgiving plans? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we uh, bought us a house a couple of years ago, and this is going to be the first Thanksgiving. We have Thanksgiving turkey in our house. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, Dale, got a question for you. All right. Have you called anybody smoking in the bathroom lately? <laughs> oh my God! Do you have? Yeah, ironically, yeah. See, he sounds like he. So our our custodian from our high school would yeah. bust people for smoking in the bathroom. He would tell on you. Yes, he would. So did you? Did, are you telling on him, Dale? Are you letting them get away with it? Oh no, no. I yeah, well, you know, I I let the teachers do the the telling. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's their job. Uh, Dale probably just give me one. I, I, I do the I do the waving. Yeah. Hey, Dale, I want to ask you about this too. When I was in school, if someone were to throw up on the floor, they used to put this kitty litter stuff down to soak it up, and it would have this. It was almost the smell of it was almost as bad as the vomit. Do you guys yes. still use that stuff? Oh heck, no, no. We've improved now. It uh, smells more like lavender these days. Oh, Modern nice. technology. <laughs> <laughs> lavender is my uh, favorite flower. That's uh, great. Wow. No more kitty litter. No more lavender, of course. <laughs> okay, buddy. Uh, has he guessed yet? No, he hasn't. All right. Uh, Dale, I would love to know how much you think this residual check is for. How much? Twenty-four thirty-four. Ooh. Ooh, there's a battle there. Twenty-four thirty. Now I'm actually going to hand it off to my intern, Sergeant Haveball. He's going to run it into the Allen Jackson, our producer, and Math Whiz, and he's going to crunch the numbers because it's so close. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but two people got very close. I think we know who it so is. So Dale, what what grade are you? Uh, what what are you one K through six? What what grade are you? Uh, school? Mid middle school, middle, middle school, school. Uh, six through eight. That's the worst. So, who are the sloppiest, the girls or the boys? Surprisingly, the girls. That is shocking to me. You know, the girls' restrooms are always trash, and the boys' restrooms are the ones that are clean. What the heck? <laughs> 
Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's uh, you As boys, we don't think that because we know how sloppy we are, and we think they're like sugar spice and everything nice. But once you get to a girl's bathroom, whoo. This right. is that age. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a All right. Time. So, uh, the Alan Jackson. Go ahead. You can well, either put gonna, him on hold or let Dale the next person hold. in. We're going to put Dale on hold. Whoever <laughs> won. And I'm going to bring back in the winner. Okay. On the line here. I'm excited because so I don't know. They are now on the line with you. All right. John Reap here. Who's this? This is Tyler. 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 From... Yeah. Idaho? From Middleton, Idaho. Yes. That's right. And yep. Well, congratulations. He was the uh, Alzheimer's caregiver. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Well, good. Glad you won, buddy. Your guess was 2150? No, that was Samantha. Uh, 20, 2327. Right. Okay. Your guess was $23.27. The actual check is for $23.27. And 54 cents. Close, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, Alan, I'm going to hold up the, the... Awesome. I'll put my finger next to the amount right there so y'all can see. I ain't lying to you. Right there's the dang check. That was close, though. Yep. That was close, too. I'm going to sign it over right now, right here on the air. And um, I'm going to hand it. To Mark Haveball, he will give it to Elliot, and then he's going to mail it to you. So what you got to do is go to um, countryish.com, okay, Tyler? Go to countryish.com, mm -hmm. click on the contact section, and send us a message through our website. Let us know your address, and my intern, Elliot, will get it out to you right away, okay? That sounds, sounds awesome, my man. But I got a quick question yeah. for you. Sure. What are you going to do with all that cash? Buy booze. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you better hurry. I heard there's a shortage of coming. Uh, congratulations. All right. Um, go ahead and put them on hold, the Alan Jackson. And uh, I want to talk to Elliot real quick. Now, uh, are people giving you their address for these checks? Because that's what I want to do. I want to send it to them. But I've heard the opposite's happening. What's going on? I would like to send it to them as well. Well, you know, the gentleman last week, he said he attempted to through the website, and it wasn't able to go through. That's why I gave them my personal uh, email. The Net Zero account. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. But also, if they reach out to me on Facebook and direct message me at Elliot Linda McGuff, I will be happy to do it as well. Yeah, so make sure you get him your address so we can send you these checks. We're sitting on some because people aren't even – Reaching out, it's like they don't care. <laughs> I want you to have it. Uh, also, didn't one come back in the mail? Uh, yes, sir. Let's talk about that. What happened here? Read this person's name. Well, this was Tyler Heath. So Tyler. Oh, another Tyler. Another Tyler. <laughs> that, that's who I thought it was at first, yes. If, if you could please reach back out to us with your address, because obviously I got the wrong one. Yeah. And I do apologize, but we did try to send it. Okay, well, there you go. Now, if you want to help impact the residual check game, why don't you just stream something that I'm in? It could be Harold and Kumar Escape Guantanamo Bay. It could be Into the Storm. It could be Eastbound and Down. It could be Jane the Virgin. It could be Good Luck Charlie. It could be the Rodney sitcom. All kinds of stuff. Or Find something I'm in. Tell 100 people about this podcast. Oh, and that's, that'd be better. We'll get residual checks one day. One of these days. One of these days. All right. All right. Well, buddy, we're almost at an hour, and we've got one more segment to do. And uh, dare I say, this might be the anchor of the show. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of negative things going on in the news. You know what I mean? A lot of politics, a lot of pandemics. We like to find the happy-go-lucky stuff and talk about that. This is a segment that could be best described by Justin Clyde. We're Lee. just small-town dudes with small-town news. Breaking stories of crimes committed you never do. Mind your P's and Q's or they'll cover you. The town may be small, but the news is huge. All right. Well, I got a dumb question for you, Stamos. I already know the dang answer. Do you love beer? Love it. <laughs> well, this story's all about you. I love beer myself. I, I like vodka, but I, I love. I like to meet the guy that invented beer and buy that dude a beer. Nothing like a good old beer. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> trying to help me out a little. Take bit. that away from him. <laughs> what were you trying to do? <laughs> Oh, you're hitting the laugh laughing button. button. Okay. Well, check this out. There's a stream in Hawaii that smells like beer, and it has alcohol in it. Come on. Really? Yep. 
Come on. That they found heaven on earth. That Belinda Carlisle was right. Heaven is a place on earth. It's in <laughs> Hawaii. While exploring a wooded area in a gulch, a hiker made the strange discovery about 120 feet below a busy highway. He said he smelled the pungent stench of beer and traced it to a small stream flowing through the woods. So, wow, this dude's got a good nose on him. You know what I mean? Followed his scent. Yeah, yeah. he's like Dog the Bounty Hunter. Yeah. He's dog, dog the Brewski Hunter. What is that? Yeah. Well, that's where Dog the Bounty Hunter, he's in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. He's in Oahu. He said, but I don't like how he called it a pungent stench. That's not a beer fan if you're calling beer a pungent stench. But sometimes, you ever open a beer and you get that skunk smell? Mm -hmm. Do you know how that is or why that, why, why, why that is so? I don't know. Well, it seems to happen in uh, bottle beers that are uh, in a green or clear bottle. So like Heineken, Amstel. Those ones sometimes will have a, a stench because something about the sunlight and the UV rays, uh, the bottle ruins the beer. Interesting. Yeah, which is why you never leave a ginger beer out in the sun. It'll, you know, turns it red and smells like burnt hair. Um, well, this hiker, instead of enjoying the free booze water, he contacted an environmental activist. What a buzzkill. He's a snitch. He should have enjoyed that booze for himself. He's a stench. He's a stench snitcher. <laughs> a scent sniffing stench snitcher. I can't say that. He called uh, environmentalist Carol Cox, who went to investigate the stream. She said, we came in here the other day, and you would think it was a beer pub that had not opened its door in three or four days. Wow, that's strong. Yeah, they found Nemo, and he was passed out. <laughs> Those aren't goldfish. They just have jaundice. A news station took a sample of the water and sent it to a lab for testing. The test found that the water contained nearly 1.2% alcohol. Huh. So if you laid in the water and just continuously drank. Yeah. You get hammered. You think you could get the buzz off of that? 1.2%. It's like a Michelob Ultra. <laughs> half of a Michelob. Yeah. It's a half a Michelob. You could catch a small buzz. Yeah. A small 80-pound girl could get drunk off of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, she said uh, Cox reached out to the Department of Health about the issue. The agency, along with the Department of Transportation, traced the problem to a storm drain near Paradise Beverages. Oh, I get it. Okay. One of the largest brewers in Hawaii. They make Hawaii's number one beer, Aloha. Damn beer. it. I, I was hoping it come out of the ground like that. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? That's what I was hoping. They, so it's probably them. They do uh, Aloha beer. They distribute Coors Light, Miller Light. Corona, Amstel, and Keystone. That's had a small spill. Yeah. That's so that explains it. the bitter beer smell. Keystone, yeah. right? The company said it ha it has no idea what caused the spill, <laughs> since there was there has not been any rain in the past few days. But uh, could it be the Hawaiian that Hawaiian god Pele, right? <laughs> Don't they? Isn't that the one with the fiery temper? Gets pissed off. <laughs> yeah, drinks angry orchards and trulies. <laughs> Uh, officials did not provide details about the cause of the spill, nor did they say whether or not Paradise Beverages would be fine. But Hawaii Five-0 has been notified, and now their blood alcohol level is Hawaii .50. <laughs> <laughs> While the spill has been stopped, oh, Cox is frustrated because this isn't the first time so something like this has happened. She said there's a lack of respect for the land and water. Even though we preach it, we don't practice what we preach. And I think they should just roll with this. Well, I think it's been going forever. Our, this is an ongoing thing, and yeah. he just happened to notice it. Yeah. This is and a they, they've walk. always let it. They right. probably – it's a spillway. They'll probably take a week off and start doing it again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> what is it going to hurt? Yeah. What's it, how's it going to hurt the environment? Well, they should – I why don't they just bottle the water? You know how we have, like, uh, Fiji water? Yeah. And they should, and they have smart water. They should have drunk water. Just bottle that water the way it is. You know, you could call it uh, Alcafina, not Aquafina. Alcafina. Alcafina. You know, when life gives you lemons, you got to make lemonade, right? Or make, a, you know, if life gives you an alcoholic creek, you can make Dasani Adams. You can make an Evian Ale. I'd love to stone across an alcoholic creek. <laughs> yeah. My God, how much money that would save us? I know. Well, pack our bags, boys. we got to go to Hawaii and do a show. All yes. right, let's work on that. Well, uh, the town... Might be small. The town may be small, but the news is huge. 
All righty, boys. Well, I think we did a good show up in here today. We're exactly at one hour. Look at that. I love that we have the timer going. I have a little going. timer going. It's we don't right want to waste your time, see? But Boom, one hour. Just hit one hour. That's it. Well, real quick, before we hang up, is there any corrections, anything I need to say, uh, any questions, comments from the oh, from the interns? We did get a couple comments at the top of the show about the least favorite side dish. Oh, yeah. Let me hear some. A couple people said green bean casserole. Mm, and the couple, least favorite? Yeah. Huh. And a couple people said sweet potato. What? And a couple people said cranberry. Huh. And one person actually said they loved the sides but didn't like the turkey. Right. What? I don't get, you know, I think my least what? favorite is uh, mashed potatoes. Really? Yeah. I don't uh I don't hate mashed potatoes, but I don't uh, it's to me when I was a kid, I hated it because it was like someone already it was like baby food. It was like someone already like, chewed it up like, and spit on your plate and said, "Here, you don't even have to chew, just like swallow." Pudding. It. Yeah. Yeah, a little tapioca. But not sweet. It's just ugh, I didn't get it. Do I you, like it now. Do you but, like baked potatoes? Mm. Oh, so you're all around like French fries. Yeah, yeah, because it's crispy. Yeah. Now, my one of my favorites is probably fried okra. Maybe uh, I like cream corn. I like green beans. I like green bean casserole. Deviled eggs. Mm-hmm. Mm. You don't like deviled eggs? I hate deviled eggs. Wow. Because it has the mustard in now, it. Now, are you? I don't like did mustard. I hear you say it in, on a commercial break? We were talking. Did you say you're cooking turkey? Yeah, I'm smoking a turkey. You're smoking it. Mm -hmm. Real quick, tell me how you do it. What's your recipe? So the day before, I just rub it down in brown sugar, Ooh. salt, pepper, garlic powder, mm -hmm. and then I throw it in the smoker for like eight hours. Oh, mm -hmm. you got a smoker? Mm -hmm. Where is this smoker? Is that's, it your mom's or your dad's? My mom's. Oh, man. Save me a plate because I'll bet you that's delicious. Oh, it's, it's freeze. good. Freeze. And then freeze when it's some. smoking, I inject it with wild turkey. I mean, I could use other bourbon, <laughs> but I just oh, think it's funny. Oh, you got to go funny. turkey on turkey. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's that's turkey on turkey crime. I love it, though. Um, all right. Well, but yeah, I'll save you some. I want to do this new move right here. We have another camera angle I want to play with right here. Oh, look at this. I'm going to look right down the barrel. See, this is where I get intimate with you at the end of the show. I really appreciate you watching. Appreciate you hitting the share button. Um, we couldn't do this without guys like you. And um, Well, last week... Um, I got, dude, we got our first bad review, guys. And that, tra it, it, that's devastating. Our first, is there like a dun dun dun? It was like a one, of, right? You yeah. got a one out of five. Yeah, I, I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah. So, what did I do with this? Uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? I don't know what I did with it. I had it up here, and now it's no longer here. Hang on. We had a bad review. Do you have it, Alan? I don't know why I don't have it up here anymore. All right. Crap. I had it saved on this. Now you kind of get the gist of it. What, what, yeah. <clears throat> what was it about? Well, look, I don't do politics, but I do feel like this is my podcast, and I should be free to talk about whatever I want. And we're not always going to see eye to eye on every little thing, and that's okay. You know, me and me and Mark don't agree on everything, and we're still buddies. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So, and and probably me and these guys and you and and you you as well. So, if you don't want to hear any Kyle Rittenhouse talk, go ahead and stop now, because I'm only going to read the review uh, about what I said last podcast, and we did talk about because we have a segment called Best Trends, and that's what was trending was Kyle Rittenhouse. And do, is it gone? I can't find it, but I'll keep looking. What the? And hell? I couldn't find it either. You just read it. No, I had it copied and pasted on my show wrap up thing, and now I can't find it. I don't know what happened. That is insane. It's like a ghost came in here and <laughs> took it down. Because I was going to read his review and actually. You know, that was the website that it was on, you remember? Yeah, hang on, let me do that. Let me yeah. go to this. It may take a second. Oh, here it is, I got it. All right. This is one star. It was by uh, Haggis Muncher Flips. And sadly, this guy, he's a fan, and he's written nice things before. And yeah, he's I'm gonna, a couple five-star reviews. Yeah, 
So my point is, I don't want to lose anybody, but we're, look, we're not always going to see eye to eye, but, but I'll read you what he said. Was the best laugh every week. Oops. He goes, oh dear. And now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read his comment and I'm going to stop and then pick it apart <laughs> because it's one thing if you don't like me and you have facts, if you don't have all the facts and you don't like me, then that bothers me. You know, I want, I want you to know everything. So he goes, old deer took a hard right. Eh, it wasn't that hard. It was in the news. I talked about it. Guns over people. That's not true. Kyle Rittenhouse is a person as well. Uh, skateboard is a bigger threat than AR-15 wielded by an illegal holder. He wasn't illegal. That was proven in court. The judge sided with him. Uh, who was being chased after killing another human being in self-defense because he was trying to kill him. Uh, another human being. Uh, but John thinks that it was justified. You are allowed to keep living right uh, it, it, you're allowed to have a gun you're allowed to go to state to state so I was just commenting on that I still believe I'm right you know if someone comes at me and I happen to have a gun you're probably gonna lose that fight I think it's uh, more Darwinism than anything else <laughs> survival of the fittest if I had a skateboard and I saw a guy with the AR-15 do you think I'm gonna hit him with a skateboard I'm probably gonna hide so you know that's what they should have done anyway John thinks it was justified. He is still funny. So thank you, Mr. Haggis. I appreciate that. Can't take that away from him. Thank you again. But my conscience can no longer listen clearly. Sorry, guys. Well, that bums me out because what he's saying is not even right. No. You know what I mean? Well. So look, I'm still going to talk about stuff that's in the news. I'm still going to give you my opinion because it's my show. And I, this is how you get to know me a little bit, right? That's what it is. So I'm sorry if it uh, upsets you. But I still hope we can be friends. Hit the share button, right? <laughs> yeah. Man. Anything hey. else, guys? Anything else I'm forgetting? Um, t I'm wanting to wish my dad a happy birthday. Oh, oh. when's his birthday? Today. Oh, happy birthday, uh, Isaiah's dad. Is he married yet? No. He okay. Ain't you remember we had a marriage proposal on yeah, here? Yeah, he got. That's, that's not happened yet. No, nope. that was forever ago. And yeah, that was over a year ago, wasn't up. it? But they're nothing. still together. Yeah, they're still together. Okay. All right, that's good. Still engaged. But okay. All right, everybody. Uh, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Only review and rate if it's going to be nice, though. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, ha have all your facts. And for the Alan Jackson, for Mark uh, Sargent, have a ball. For Elliot the intern, for intern Isaiah, for Marcus Stamos, I am John Reap. <laughs> Bicycle. Well, life on the farm is kind of laid back, but I wouldn't know that I'm from a cul-de-sac. Don't shoot a back and I don't smoke crack. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, a simple kind of life, never did me no harm, but I do know a guy with only one arm. Keep your fancy smartphones and your self park cars. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, I got a podcast, it'll make you giggle. It ain't number one, it's right in the middle. The town's not big, but it ain't too little. It's time for Country is Hey everybody, it's me again. I just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. You know, we couldn't do this without supporters like you. Oh wait, are you not a supporter? Well, you could be. It's real simple. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on the word support. That will take you to our Patreon page. That's our support page. And from there, you can support us many different ways. There's uh, different levels. You got $5 and up. You got Pewter Pro, Rhinestone Level, Executive Zirconia, all the way up to Platinum Elite. And all of them come with different rewards. We're talking hats, T-shirts, ginger beard masks, even be a guest on the show. You got to check out our Patreon page. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on support. And thank you. Thanksgiving song. Hey, happy Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for you. All right. I'm thankful for you watching, sharing,
commenting. I hope you have the fantastic Thanksgiving. I know that I will. Come see me in Zanies in Nashville. Come see me in Virginia Beach. Come see me in Des Moines. Come see me in Lexington. Uh, JohnReap.com for tour dates. CountryIsh.com for